Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. And it's always good to be with you as we do another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And my name is Phil Thompson, and it's always good to be with you, as I just said. So uh, Steve and I are with a company called JSL Solutions. We work with churches and ministries exclusively, and we also, uh, well, we we do tech stuff. What is the, very quickly before we get into today's topic, just so we can kind of set the table here, because today we're actually going to talk about tech. I guess so, yeah. Or it's not, not really tech, but it's huh? it's tech mean? related, definitely. Well, it's streaming video. There's is no that tech or there's not? no megahertz and well bit rates in here, but picky, picky, picky. <laughs> All right, well, tell everybody what we do, and then we'll get into. All right, the so we provide live streaming for ministries. We provide uh, church management websites and uh, mobile apps for ministries, and we help. Uh, from time to time on this podcast, because Steve and I are both involved in leadership in our churches, we uh, have a heart for ministry. And a lot of times we'll talk about stuff that's non-tech related to enable volunteers and pastors. And we've all got a lot of experience there. But today we are talking about streaming video. Yes. Right up our, right, right in our wheelhouse. Right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Streaming that's, video or online streaming or online church or whatever you want to call whatever it. Whatever you want to call it. Because we, one of our products is streamingchurch.tv. So we've put together a little deal here uh, just in time for the fall season coming up here and, you know, hopefully more viewers. If you do streaming video, we hope you do it with us. But regardless of who you do streaming video or if you're even thinking about doing streaming video, here are what we are calling the Ten Commandments to Successful Streaming Ministry. Yes. Yeah. So just so we, happens we have ten. We so we're just calling so them Ten Commandments. Yeah, we're calling that's what we're calling the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you know, just a little takeoff on that thing that happened several thousand years ago with Moses. Yes. So, all right. So the idea is this: it, if you really want to be successful in your streaming ministry and streaming video, your services, your events, if you really want to be successful, it's important to 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 give people the best experience they can have when they watch your live stream. On mobile devices or computers or Roku yeah, or whatever it might just be. Just like, yeah, you want the best experience for people coming to church. You want the best experience for those attending online. Exactly. And so here are some valuable tips, which we're calling commandments, <laughs> really commandments, but they're they're very valuable tips. Yes. So, all right, shall we jump into it now? Sure, let's do it. So number one on our list. Number one, always test. Yes. Always test. So this is this is really important for both those that are just getting into streaming. It was really important for that group. So if you're just getting into streaming, yeah. you wanna you don't want to wait till Sunday morning to figure out whether how well your stream's gonna work. Yeah. You wanna make sure that you test your equipment, test your software, test your setup, uh, make sure everything's going to work as planned prior to the Sunday service. Yeah, and and even if you are a veteran when it comes to streaming video, you should you should certainly uh, maybe you don't have to test earlier in the week, but you might want to well, make sure. Uh, yeah, it could be good. We've had we've got a really strong ministry that's been streaming with us, doing a great job for years. That um, we you know that working with them, we made some changes and and that they had requested mm -hmm. and they didn't test before Sunday morning. Yeah. And so they had That's a right. configuration setting wrong. And yeah. so, yeah, it can, yeah. Uh, especially if you change something, yes, which is what they did. And, uh, but, but, you know, I mean, even if you've been doing this, I would say that you want to make sure your equipment, everything is ready to go. So, you know, and not two minutes before the service starts. Right. That's what we're getting yeah. at here right. for veterans. And, and of course, if you're a newbie, a lot sooner than that, test a lot earlier yeah. than that. So. They, yeah. This particular church had become, I think, complacent because, wow, we've been streaming for years. It works every Sunday. We turn yeah. the thing on and it just goes. So, yeah. but it's, it's easy to, to become complacent. And because, you know, with our setup, it's pretty simple. But so when we talk about testing equipment, we're talking about your video, which would be include your cameras, your audio, 
uh, all the different devices you may have, depending on what you do for streaming video, right. uh, all those kind of things. You just want to make sure things are good, uh, including lighting, probably in your auditorium and your worship right. center. Yeah, and if you're if you're new to streaming, what's really important is to test your upload yes. speed on your internet connection because yeah. that's something people take for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, people will uh, quote the "Oh, I paid for the." 40 megabits up and 100 megabit down package. So I get 40 megabits up. But if you don't actually test, you may find that you have, are getting actually quite a bit less than that. Yeah. And especially, and you should test, uh, I would test on a regular basis. I mean, maybe if things are going great, you don't have to test every weekend, but I would certainly test if you can. And then especially if you happen to have a, a network that's maybe kind of problematic, you know, where, it seems like things aren't going well. Sometimes your internet just drops out during the week or whatever it might be. I would test it. And, uh, and it's, and again, if you're having issues when you are streaming, of course for us, we're available seven days a week and you can call us, especially on Sundays, but I would even test, you know, if you suspect you're having problems, buffering or something's weird, I would run a quick test. It only takes a couple yeah. minutes at the most right. to, and, to do it. And right. it will give you a lot of insight <laughs> On what's I mean, we've had this, and I probably said this story before at your church years ago. I remember we're streaming; everything always works really well. And I'm actually the church online pastor, and I'm we're streaming. And I noticed we're having a a latency, and you know you always get some latency on your video from what's live and what's going on. But it was getting like one minute, minute and a half, two minutes, three minutes. I'm like behind live. Something yeah. is weird here, and. Uh, I think it finally just died, and so I, uh, I I picked up the phone to call customer support, and I realized, wait, I'm customer support, and so I checked the internet, and we had no internet. I mean, the internet had just magically, mysteriously disappeared, <laughs> and it was usually very consistent, so weird things do happen, and I think, uh, I've told this story before, but I think years ago, we used to have golf, golf tournaments, and still do, I think, but we used to have a couple big ones that came in Tucson. And the networks in town here, the, the ESPNs and stuff, would somehow or another, they'd tap into the internet in Tucson or something, and, and the internet would kind of like shrink down for many customers oh, yeah. during the golf tournament. Yeah, so another thing to really look out for is – and is if you have open Wi-Fi at your church. A lot of oh, people yeah. don't realize that, hey, I'm on the wire. I'm, I've hardwired my thing in, so the Wi-Fi guys won't have any impact on me. Well, uh, same network. They, same network, yep. same same deal. Yep. And a lot of people, it worked all great during the week, but now I've got 400 yep. people in the in the service that are, you know, we're 100 of them are connected with their phones right. to the to the internet. Then, yeah. Yep. So anyway. You want to definitely test. Test. That's Upload first commandment. And always test. That's first commandment when it comes to quality streaming video. The second commandment is? Designate an online host. Designate an online host. Now, not everybody does this, but we believe it's really important. Right. So, and we may be, as we're going through this, we're, we came up with this list. We may want to rename this in, yeah. the, in the future to just treat your online campus like you do your physical campus. So one of the things is you're going to have a greeter, you're going to have ushers, you're going to have people that are going to interface with the people that come to your facility in the same way you want to have that same kind of thing set up and prepared online. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of degrading the experience for those that are attending online. Someone's coming for the first time, which is this is a great avenue for them. If there's not a greeter out there or somebody that they can ask questions of that's part of the church... Um, kind of you know reduces the right. their experience. Their experience. I mean, and and again, we our our company provides a, a a platform, a chat platform. We have chat chat. We have you can see who's online with maps and you know, right. and we have a, a web host. We have this ro- these roles set up that you can features. play yeah. online. You, you the lots of things you can do with us. Now of course there are churches that use our services that have decided not to use any of that and they just have video only. And that's an option. But we think the optimal experience would be to have somebody there to greet people when they log in and answer any questions and maybe take prayer requests. Private right. prayer is an option with our platform. So, you know, uh, somebody that's designated to do that that that's got some experience as far as 
character and and you know has been around for a little bit understands the church understands right what the church and believes just, in and all that and just kind of reiterating and this is really important because the, the chances of someone coming to visit your church online before they come through the doors of the building are really high and so you want to make a good first impression you don't have an opportunity to do that after after their first visit so right um some of the stuff that you would do for you know making sure the parking lot's clean and someone's there to open the door and you want to think about the experience for that online person and and put the things in place so that right. they have a great experience parking as well. Parking may not be a problem online. Parking but, probably yeah won't yeah, be but, too tough finding a spot. Yeah, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I think you can be. It's really be. It's it's all about hospitality. All right, so let's move on here. Number three in the Ten Commandments to successful streaming. So it's follow up. Follow up. Uh, so. When you have people online, especially if you're if you're able to collect some information, that sounds kind of uh, sterile. But if you're able to, somebody contacts you, you talk with them. Yeah, I that, think all ministries even, I mean, go through this where they they provide avenues for people to connect, right? Not only online, but but in person. You know, at mm -hmm. our church, they, yeah. they call it a um, communication card, but. There's, you know, there's really a drive to be able to get some contact information from those that are coming for the first time just right. so you can reach out to them. And you can do that, you know, if you've got a uh, – well, you can certainly point people to that on your website. We, we have, again, a platform that enables you to put something like that on there, a form or something. Uh, we call it a connection card at my church. You call it a communicate – you call it a – what did you just call it? It's, we used to call it what you call I it. I think it's a connection card. Connection card uh, – uh, but anyhow, it, it's it's a way people can fill out something, prayer request, want to get on the newsletter, mailing list, email list, those kind of things. You can make that available online, and, and you should definitely have that available. And then when people fill it out, you need to follow up and see how their experience was, yeah. see if you can help them with, with them anything. Just like you would people that turn yeah. in a right. connection card. Yeah. Um, you know. And there's a, you know, most churches have a, a process set up for that, mm -hmm. where first time visitors get this treatment, second time visitors get this yeah. other treatment. If you don't have that, and you should just include your online visitors in that same process. Yeah, you could certainly do that and it, connect with people. It's all about connecting with people, interaction. All right, number four. So make streaming video or make your online service easy to find. Yeah, and we we actually have run into this ourselves when we're working with some of our customers, and we we'll go to their church website and can't find where to get the video. Right? How do <laughs> I attend that? online? Where is that yeah. link that takes me to the online service? Yep, it, there's no link. There's no place to find the page that the streaming video might be embedded on. Uh, I mean, it might be there, but it's hidden. Right. right? You can't easily find it. And so our point with this one is, you know, we recommend you put it, at least put something at the where people can easily see it. You don't necessarily have to put the video on that homepage, but you could have a, a link to it, an image that you hyperlinked, a nice big image right. that says, click and, here to watch live service. Right. And we kind of, we believe that, I mean, there's a few, two, three, four things that are most important for people come into your website to communicate. You know, a lot of it is, part of it is to be able to understand what you're like. And so a live service or recorded services is really important. Kind of a what to expect um, when I come for first is really important. So there's some things and we, so we feel like these things, how to find my live service should be one of those key things you emphasize. So. I really do. I think so because people are looking. And again, newer people aren't going to be able to, they're not going to take the time to try to search through your website, you know, to find this mysterious place. You know, they, it needs to be right out there in the open. All right. All right. Now, shall we move on? We should. So we've, those are the, we've gone through four of our commandments yeah. here. Number five on our list is address the online community. So address the online community. So this, this is done several different ways, but. Uh, we have found, and, and I've, I don't think this can be overstated, but uh, your pastor, who would get up usually and welcome people, you know, to your church service. Hopefully, they do that. <laughs> uh, they should also, in the same breath, welcome the people watching online. 
Right. This kind of ties into the philosophy I had for, you know, that's kind of behind number two. Some of the same things that you would do as people come to the church would be right. address them and say, right. welcome for coming. If you're a first time visitor, we're really glad you're here. You can get more info over here. Right. And so addressing the online crowd uh, is as part of that. It's really important. Yeah. And we're going to talk about one of the other things that that helps foster as well. Right. Yeah, the, I, the difference, I guess, between, you know, designate an online host and address is is that the online host probably is not going to be on video where the pastor would be on the video. Right. Uh, although years ago, I used to be also on video. We would break away to me. Right. It's just kind of like the, the greeter is probably not going to speak on Sunday morning. Right. But it's, you know, it's important for everyone yeah. to treat the audience, whether they're there in person or right. online, in a similar fashion. Yeah. So the... Just like the pastor would address those attending, the pastor or those doing announcements would mm -hmm. address the online crowd yeah, as well. I think both would be good, and then uh, and, and even mentioning it, you know, th throughout the throughout your message. I mean, you know, when you ask somebody that when you ask the congregation to turn to, you know, First John chapter two or whatever, you know, include the online community in that as well. Say, you know, you too, whatever creative way you want to say it. You too, those of you watching online. And then the other thing too, I think, would be uh, that it, it gives – and for us, we have really detailed analytics on our platform that we use. So if you're able to, uh, before you before the pastor gets up, usually it just depends on when all this is happening. We're talking logistics here. But you know, normally the pastor is after the music part. The worship, the pastor is eventually going to get up and do the sermon. If somebody can slip him or her the information about where these people are watching from ahead of time, you know, uh, because sometimes there's people watching from different countries, different states, different cities. You know, our our platform gives you that analytics, and that's even kind of cool to do. You know, mm -hmm. welcoming people from Great Britain or you know a different country, maybe right. so Canada. Is Canada a country? I'm just <laughs> teasing. I'm just being funny. All right. So, so, yeah. so. And, and, and the other thing, let me hit this. Maybe you're going to say this. But the other advantage to really addressing the online community, like if the pastor does it on video, is it lets and reminds the rest of the congregation, you know, inside the actual building, hey, there's something going on here that's bigger than these four walls. Right. There's people watching, you know possibly all over the world and it, it creates it helps create a bigger vision for what you're trying to do with your church right when you, exactly. when you say that it reminds people sitting there going oh yeah that's right we're online so that that kind of leads into our sixth commandment right exactly number Which six is equip your members to invite others equip your members to invite others so there's several ways to do this uh you know, what I've got here in my notes is, you know, when you're doing weekly newsletters, sending those out, email or even snail mail, you know, put something in there about don't forget you can watch us online or something like that. Maybe a little more creative than that. Uh, your church programs, flyers you may have, brochures you may have around the church on tables, uh, even signage. You know, if you do it well, putting it, putting that around the church signage is, is a really important thing. Uh, because it again reminds people what you're doing. Right now, the for almost all churches, the best um, referral or the best person to come to a church is ref someone referred by a friend. Right. And so those are the ones. So you know, churches do this already. Is they make they try to make it easy for people to invite their friends to come because. Mm -hmm. If you have a, I don't know what the stats are, but I know they're much greater. If you've got someone at church that's inviting a friend, the likelihood of them coming back and experiencing your your ministry is a lot higher than just some you know other means. And so, one of the things that you want to do is make sure that people attending there in person realize that you're broadcasting online mm -hmm. and know how to invite other people to attend online. Right. So. It's just so much easier for someone to invite someone to come to church if the first step is for them to attend online. Because mm -hmm. the barrier to entry is you don't have to get dressed up. You don't even have to get out of bed. You just right. you can attend right from your laptop in bed on Sunday morning to get a you know, feel yeah. for what this ministry is about. Yeah. So if the congregation knows you're streaming online, you have equipped them to invite others with just yeah. a super easy way to get people to attend your church. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Awesome. 
So we're going through the Ten Commandments to Successful Streaming Ministry. And by the way, we don't really have these in any particular order per se. I mean, maybe a few of them are, but, uh, you know, as far as importance, but uh, they're certainly good tips to have. So, all right, so where are we at? We're at, uh, we're at number seven. Number seven, create online goals and measure the results. Yes. So you've got a great tool here. If you're doing streaming video or you're thinking about doing streaming video, you have got a wonderful tool at your at your access here and you can use it to to really reach people and connect with people and so uh you should have a goal involved you know and and as far and different goals on you know, how we're going to use this and you know are we just going to turn it on and forget about it or are we actually going to to use it to reach people and again detailed analytics are involved uh, some companies more than others. We've got some detailed analytics. You can look at the number of viewers you have. Uh, you can look at uh, their locations. Uh, and, you know, if you have, for some reason, there's a little town not too far from you, but maybe it's an hour away from you that there's several people watching online. Hey, maybe down the road a ways might be a place to do a church plant or extend your campus. All right, exactly. So, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but it's the same kind of thing you would do in your ministry if you weren't streaming. You would right. set up goals for the year. You'd want to have um, equip your members to be able to invite others, and you'd set goals for, uh, you know, where we want to grow by 5%, 10% this year, and how are we going to do that? We're going to implement this, this, right. and this. We're going to, you know, whatever it may be. And the idea is your online campus is just another vehicle, so you would want to set up goals for it may be attendance goals or mm -hmm. invitation goals or yeah. whatever it may be to to grow that online campus and then go through and measure every week how you're doing just like you would in the physical building if you mm -hmm. want to grow your church and you want to you know yeah. make sure that your congregation is inviting their friends and families you would track how many of my guy people actually did invite friends and family and actually how many of those showed up and, and this is all about having successful ministry, in my opinion. I mean, I know some people say, ah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna track all this stuff. Well, you know, uh, my answer to all this stuff when you're uh, tracking attendance or you don't want to track attendance or you don't want to do this is, let me ask you this: Do you count the offering? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we count the offering. Okay, so you count the offering, but you're not going to count the people. How do you know? How do you know who you're ministering to? How do you know, you yeah. know, if you're reaching people? That's and, what I, that's my argument. Uh, and there's an old, a long time business adage: what you measure is what you're going to accomplish. Yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, so if you aren't setting goals and measuring progress to th those goals. You're not going to exactly. accomplish it. Yeah. All right. So let's move on here. So that was number seven. Number eight is uh, use social media to target your audience. So there is some really good stuff. I mean, years ago. Not that long ago, social media, you know, it's, it was around, it's been around, Facebook's been around now for 10 years, whatever, but you the, the, targeting people, you know, and there's been a lot of pushback on Facebook advertising and stuff, but Facebook's done a really, I think, a pretty good job now in you can target who you're trying to reach using Facebook. They have some pretty good analytics, and you can do a lot with it. Google AdWords, of course, have been around for a while. So you can do some of this for free, obviously, but you can spend a little bit of money, have a budget, and you can reach people in your area with streaming video, All right. promoting and, it. And again, this would apply to whether you're talking about your physical ministry or your online ministry, but you can put together a strategy that's completely geared for on getting the online yep. attendance up and use the social media tools. And it, Just the same way you could get them walking through the door. Yeah, and it's not going to cost that much money. I mean, it really isn't. So something to consider. Uh, so if you're doing streaming video, consider you know using social media to target your audience specifically. Yeah, All and right. that's both paid and, and yeah. free avenues. So. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we've been through eight of our we've commandments. Been through eight. We've got we two got more to two go. Two more to go. About three more minutes here. All right, so, so let's go. Number nine. Number nine. Speaking of money, <laughs> make giving easy. So... Again, if you're doing streaming video, you've got people online, and again, you're going to go back to the 
actual physical building, you know, if you do an offering, you give people an opportunity to give some way, mm -hmm. somehow, right. either pass the plate or maybe you have boxes in the back, you know. You typically make it pretty easy. You try to make it easy <laughs> for people to give. <laughs> and and you can do that online. You can you can create, you know, there's there's tools out there. There's companies. I mean, there's PayPal. There's Easy Tithe, I think it's called. There's different companies out there. And yes, they take a little piece of the pie, but if you make it easy, I mean, my church, we're, we're not, my church is very small. We're not doing streaming video, but we have got, you know, stuff on our app. We, we have a mobile app and it's easy for people to give. And we have a lot, when we started doing that, our giving went up because people, it's easy. They could just give, they didn't come to church, they could give, you know? And so the same thing with streaming video, you can have it on a platform where people can easily give online. And, and by the way, those of you involved in leadership know this, when people give, they're buying into what you're doing and it creates, again, a, a better connection. They're supporting the ministry. All right. So make that easy. Make it easy for people to give. And plus it will support your streaming video. Exactly. All right. All right. And number 10. Number 10. 10 of our number 10 list is make sure help is always available. Make sure help is all, always available. We were... Uh, we came up with this idea of doing 10 commandments to successful ministry. And we got down, we got to, to nine. It's like, what can be the 10th one? <laughs> it was kind and this like was, a, this was an important one. It really is important because. It's, yeah. You don't want to be, I mean, there is some technology involved with streaming and there's some things that can go wrong and you can get in crisis mode. Mm -hmm. So it's just much like, uh, you know, you set up your sound guy. You don't say, oh, turn everything on, make sure the mic check's okay, and then you can go home uh, during the service. You know, you don't say, yeah. you don't do that. You you kind of make sure that help is available if you right. need uh, an adjustment or an, or you run into an issue. Right. And and so this is true if you're doing streaming video. You should you should pick a provider, a company that that's, you know, good with customer service, is available seven days a week like we are and you know make it so that it's you know if you need somebody in a hurry you can call them or go online to their website and chat with them and if it's going to take a phone call that person can call you and help your department just very important to do that and again all this stuff we're talking about is is designed to help mm -hmm. create the online experience the streaming video experience we want it to be a good one for not only you as a church leader and you know volunteer or tech person but also for the viewer, which is probably most important. All right. So there you have it. All right. So we have our our top ten tips yeah, that we're, we should uh, we should create a, a pamphlet out of this or, or, or sure, something like that, huh? Yeah, maybe we will. All right. So Some uh, stone tablets, maybe that would work. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> All right. So uh, Steve and I would love to get your feedback. Support at streamingchurch.tv is is one way to get a hold of us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Maybe you got something to add to it. Maybe we should make it the eleven commandments of, or twelve or whatever. You know. So. Give us some feedback. We'd love to get it. And you can listen to us. This this is a podcast called Church Solutions Podcast. You can subscribe to this on your using your favorite yeah. podcast. iTunes, um, Stitcher Radio. Your favorite provider, right? Yeah. Your Stitchers, whatever. Are we on Stitcher? One of those companies yeah, we are. quit carrying us. I don't know what happened, but but uh, but anyway, we're on yeah, we're them all. On, yeah. All the big popular. We should ones. be on all the big ones. So so yeah, do that. Church Solutions Podcast. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a podcast. There you go. And and who would want to miss this? All right, we're out of time. So uh, he is Steve Lacey. My name is Phil Thompson. We hope this has helped you and we hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care now.